Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. And on this episode, we got some cheat codes, man. So we're talking about how you can make a profitable album, which is one trick. Really one formula. You know how I am with my math on this show. We're going to get into that, all right? Uh, and on today's episode, Copyright Explain will be coming up in a hot second, all right? If you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. If you want to skip Copyright Explain, you can do so right down below so you can jump into the meat of the show. But here we go. Copyright, the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions the exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and vend their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the WAV MP3 AIFF of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via SoundExchange and PPL over in the UK. SoundExchange is based here in America, and if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America, and PRS over in the UK, and other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right, now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports, and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now, Lyric Fine right here. You can get your Lyric Display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match. But that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17. And that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute. The right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease, or lending. And then we have the right to public performance. The right to perform the copyrighted work publicly. The right to public display. The right to display the copyrighted work publicly. And the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Copyright Explained. I'm going to hop into this with a little segment of uh, something before we jump into the preface with a little segment of uh, the little pump deal that I was talking about on yesterday's episode. Because uh, this is about NFTs this week. And I want to let you know this show is coming. All right, but you got to get through this week before I bring up that episode. So here we go. Welcome back to the inside of the computer. And I just got this here. Usually you see my preface coming up first, but I just want to let you know I'm still working on this video. It's coming. It is not me trying to, you know, capitalize off the name, but I am just so blown away that finally somebody really went and made this happen, right? The security NFT is the most intriguing and the most rev revolutionary NFT on the market. And this will change the scope of the music industry forever. That's why I never really made an NFT video until I saw this coming. Uh, because all those other NFTs, the artwork and stuff, I don't care. Nobody cares about that. You'll find that people will care more about a security NFT and musicians will care more about a security NFT than any thing else unless something new and revolutionary is coming so this isn't what today's show is about uh you can check this out on your own but i'm gonna break this down probably next week if 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 not later in the week next week but I, i'm telling you this one's coming all right let's jump into today's show so that's all i'm saying right there let's jump into the preface all right everybody we are back into the regular scheduled programming of today's show um and here's what we're talking about 
we got to revisit building leverage from yesterday. Again, before we go into our one trick, which is a fan to debt ratio. Um, and if some of you all know what this is, then great. But a lot of people don't because they haven't really built fan bases. So is this is another one of those videos where I'm going to tell you, the viewer, what you can expect as you build your base. This is why you want to build a fan base first before you take on debt, which is the record deal. And for, for all my independent use, uh, labels out there, you also want to make sure that this artist has a fan base before you pour debt into them. All right, so that's the trick right there. A little sample of it before we get into it. And then we got to revisit brand value. I'll make it quick. Today's show shouldn't be too long. And then we got to talk about lurking record labels. And this is not saying that record labels are bad. This is the process in which this will happen uh, when they notice the fan to debt ratio. Those record labels who know how to notice this. This is an instinctual thing in the back of the mind that the mind knows when they can sense and feel the fan base growing and festering. And the record labels will lurk when they feel that. Their, doo -doo -doo, their radars go up. It's not a bad thing. All right. Debt is not always a bad thing. There's good debt too. Okay. So here we go. Building leverage. The solution is to build the leverage. The key indicators you're watching are are your Spotify monthly listeners as well as your top three social media platforms. Like I said yesterday on the how to evaluate your album or your NFT or, you know, for what it's worth, this, the top three social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Snapchat, Snap, Snapchat, Snap, Snap, uh, Chat, and TikTok, whether it be those, right? You know what I'm saying? Or you have uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube or Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is you use, right? Um, whatever your top three social media platforms are, you got to build that following and you got to build that subscriber base. And those are the ones that you're going to focus on, okay? Whether it be three, whether it be two, me, I'm really only on YouTube. I'm trying Instagram and Facebook, but it's not really working, mainly because I don't have the patience for it, but that's just me. You know what I mean? So, um... Build that. In addition to that, email list and text message lists from your direct-to-fan marketing are a must. Now, this, the email list and the text message list is what I love the most. I love that aspect of social media. All the other stuff online, I don't really care about that. I like talking to you all directly. All right? So, either way, it's about staying engaged, and the engagement builds the leverage. Once you have the volume of subscribers to any one of these platforms or lists, and you engage with them, what ends up happening is you build a, a supreme amount of leverage, okay? Garnering a following via micro content, that's the content you put out on social media, builds leverage to offset the debt incurred in the recording process. What I mean by that is, all this is going to tie into our fan and debt ratio formula here, but what I mean by that is, when you use micro content to build leverage first, by the time you put out the album, you'll offset that cost so quickly. Right. Because you'll have debt, 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 debt and expenses and expenses. And then when you release it, it's like it tips the scale this way. Right. So then now the money comes in. But if you don't have the fan base built first and you put the album out, maybe this is a promotional piece. Maybe you do three or four songs, something small, nothing big. Then it's cool. People have a place to come and listen to music and do due diligence. You don't always have to do it that way. I like the sample route. I like to take time on social media, build a following, build a fan base, offer something for sale. You know what I mean? You get in there and then you offer the music. But there's so many ways you can do it. You can always uh, book a call with me and we'll go through it. Now, when your fans can pay back your debt at a fast rate, you have leverage. This ties into our formula, our one trick today to make a profitable album. Okay, When your ancillary sellable items bring in more profit, then your music, then you have leverage. Music is a low ticket item, okay? It doesn't have to be, but in most cases, unless you put it in a vinyl physical form, people are going to pay roughly less than a penny for your music because that is what the market has priced it because we live in a free market system when it comes to the sound recording. That's what the market has priced it at. Shout out to Tiffany Red and the 100 percenters over there doing their thing. So you got to understand, all the ancillary stuff, whether you're selling somebody else's product due to, you know, affiliate marketing, I mean, influencer marketing, and whether you're 
uh, selling T-shirts and merchandise of your stuff, lighters, pencils, whatever, merch packs you're doing, whatever, how you do it, right? They're always going to sell more based on your fan base being engaged with you. Building leverage is key. Look at all these people. You got all these people. That's the leverage right there. Money's just bouncing up and down over here. Without these people, you have none. Now, let's dig into this formula. Fans to break even, the fan to debt ratio. The average fan listens to an album 10 times or more. Especially when the album doesn't have, you know what I'm saying, that much going on. Like, it's not that many songs. 10 songs is enough. I don't know why people overdo it, but they do. You know what I mean? So, like, Meg Thee Stallion's last album had 21 songs on it. Who cares to listen to that many songs? They all sound the same, right? So give us a little bit less. Give us a better quality song, and then we'll listen more. Anyway, a little, little, little bit of game right there. All right, so the average stream rate is 0. .0038 cents, right? A third of a penny. Uh, and you multiply that or almost a fourth of a, 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 um, a four-tenths of a penny. You multiply that by the 10 songs on the album, and when the fan listens to that entire album one time, they're paying you almost four pennies, okay? Now, you multiply that by 10 listens of the entire album. This is a fan now. We're not talking about a casual listener. This is a fan. Then you get 38 cents. One fan equals 38 cents, okay? Now, we're going to weigh the debt. Now we're going to weigh the debt against the 38 cents. How many fans do you need to break even? Most fan bases convert to action. What I mean by you giving them something to do in full action, like paying for something, at 1 to 6%. So then, let's throw an example up on the screen. Here we go. First project debt, let's say you, you say, okay, we're going to set a, a, a budget of 10 grand. That's going to do or produce our first project, and it's going to be a really great project at 10 grand. For an independent, you can produce a really nice sounding, great sounding project. Looks good. Artwork is great. The rollout is great. The little, you know, the low budget video is great. You have some money for, you know, all that, all in 10 grand. Take the debt, divide it by the fan, which is 38 cents. Right, An average fan listens to an album about 10 times when it comes out. They're just, listen, 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 go, 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 play, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat. That equals 26,315 fans needed to break even. Okay? I'm not talking about streams. This is the amount of fans you need to break even on this $10,000 debt. Now, remember we said, let's go back. We said that most fan bases convert to action at 1% to 6%. All right? I'm not talking about your text message, text message click-through rate. I'm not talking about your email click-through rate. I'm talking about by the time you all open the email and you click on something and you do an action, we're talking about 1% to 6%. Now, when you look at my chart here, this is very humbling right here. 26,315 is 1% of 2.6 million followers or subscribers. This is So if we go back to the top of our funnel, that's on social media. By the time they took action, we're talking about 1% of this. 2% of this. This is the average. And I'll be frank, this is my click. This is my click. Action. I'm at I'm a two percent guy. The people who follow the music money makeover show, I'm in the two percent club. You know what I mean? So check it. I would love to get to the five percent club. So to make this happen, this 38 cents per fan at two percent, you need 1.3 million followers. Well, what about three percent? Eight hundred seventy seven thousand followers. Four percent, six hundred and fifty seven thousand followers. 5%, 526,000 followers. 6%, 438,000 followers. Again, we're talking about fans. We're talking about fans. 
I'm not talking, and these are, these are listening fans, not I'm buying merch and all of this. These are fans who are strictly listening to music. This is it. So I know this is very humbling. And I probably should have did this on $1,000 so you could see how it looked. But I'm just, you know, on average, by the time you, you, you know, for independent, by the time you calculate gas, food, studio time, mixing, taking a photo shoot, and you tally all of it up, you're looking at 10 grand anyway, you know, on the budget. So this is a realistic picture. This is actually so close to real that it's not even funny. And so to get your 10 grand back, to get your 26,000 fans, this is what you're looking like in terms of followers. Now, these followers are, are across the board. They're across the board now of Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. These are all the people that fell through the link in your bio to go and listen. Came through your email list, your text message list, all of that to go in and do an action to listen. And this is what it takes. So that's why buying followers never worked. You know, uh, you know, all the gimmicks and schemes never worked. Because at the end of the day, when you put out a project, you need the people to be there to listen to it. And this, this right here is the secret trick to making a profitable album. So if you don't have the followers to make the return on the music, I'm not talk because I'm not talking about merch. Because when we get into merch, that's something else. If you don't have the fans to make the return for the debt for the music itself, go back and build your fan base first. It's going to be easy for a lot of people to make a thousand dollars with a little little hard work, but it's even harder to generate ten thousand dollars. This is probably one of the most golden videos I will ever do on this channel by giving you this breakdown right here. A lot of you all who have fan bases know, and some who don't have or who've never built don't. This is the single most important one trick it takes to build a profitable album, and that is to know what you need to break even on your album and go over just one penny. Hey, we profited one penny. This is it. This is it. This is it. Yes, music is a low ticket item. And, I, and I'm guaranteeing you, by the time you get here, you're selling a bunch of stuff. Don't get it twisted. So, you know, you're selling T-shirts, hats, you're making bank. But I'm telling you to make your album profitable. This is what it's going to take. All right. So now, brand value. Your brand is all, will always be bigger than your music. Always. Labels are still trying to make sales because that's the property they are investing in, the sound recording copyright. Pause for a second. I was going to get to that back here, but I'll go back. Remember, I, I, I harped on the, um, the music itself. I didn't get on merchandise. Anytime the label steps out of the sound recording copyright, it now becomes some form of multiple rights deal or 360 deal. But labels are still trying to make sales or streams, that is, because that's the property they're investing in, the sound recording copyright. The reason why you can make more profit on other items than the music itself is because your consumer believes in you, your message, and what you stand for. And sometimes the label does, but the, the, you can make more profit there too because the label injects, it injects money into that other, those other areas. And they know that you are going to be great and you're going to be big. The label knows that your brand is bigger than the sales and streams anyway as well. Brand is always bigger than the sales. Always and forever. Chipotle, you know, our, our little boy. Oh, I love Chipotle. That little boy that went viral years ago. User-generated content lets you know how big your brand is. When people start dancing, taking photos, modeling, you know, racing cars and putting your music underneath, that's brand. That's what that means. Okay? Record labels lurk in the dark. Record labels can be a good thing or a bad thing. It all depends on what you need. By the time you can make a profitable $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, 
you'll be in a better position to sit down and negotiate with the record label versus if you never made a dollar at all, okay? So record labels aren't always bad. And I'm talking about my independence. You know what I'm saying? You just got to make sure that they have a game plan for you. Tailor fit for you. When you choose a record label, they should aid in the process of helping you produce a profitable album, not put you into debt, not lock you in the contract, not put you in an indentured servitude slave contract. None of that. When you choose a record label, they should aid in the process of helping you produce a profitable album, not put you into debt. Okay. Who wants to be in a slave contract? Not me. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, not you either. Now, in order to combat this, you need to take a thorough evaluation of what the subsequent projects will be worth. So go back and watch my video from yesterday, how to evaluate your music uh, for music investors and NFTs. All right. Uh, and then uh, and then you can come back to this one and you'll see they'll they'll add up together. I, and I have another video coming tomorrow and that will finish off this week's series of videos. Uh, and so what I, what, where I left off is some uh, worth will be uh, will be worth uh, how much debt you can afford to take and how big of a royalty will you need to pay the debt back in a timely fashion. Uh, if you go back to yesterday's video, you will find the, the chart in the cheat codes for that. Really, all this should be cheat codes. I don't know if this should be titled cheat codes. I don't know. I might title it cheat codes. I don't know. Maybe it'll make some people click on it more than they're clicking on these videos now. Okay, so with all that being said, we're at the end of the video. Always build fan engagement first before producing a costly album. Figure out how many true fans you have. Build brand value. Watch out for terrible record deals. Uh, don't seek out record deals early unless you want to open your back door, bend over, and all of that stuff. Anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching the show. I really appreciate it. Make sure you support the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Book a call. Download the free split sheet, the free profit maximization guide. Download the profit maximization bundle with the ebooks in them. You name it. Purchase the producer's contract course. Support this channel. I'll support you. Book a call with me and all that good stuff. I will see you. Oh, I forgot to say text me. 470-291-5767. 470-291-5767. And I'll see you all later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.